Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 16th of September. India's coronavirus cases surpassed 5 million mark. Pakistani students back in school after more than six months. And Nepal to resume domestic flight operations from September 17. And now for all the details. India's coronavirus infections surged past 5 million on Wednesday with more than 82,000 deaths reported so far. India is only the second country in the world to have more than 5 million cases after the United States. It added its last million infections in just 12 days. India's total coronavirus cases surpassed 5 million on Wednesday as the pandemic extended its grip on the vast country at an ever faster rate. India has for some time been recording the world's biggest daily rises in cases and on Wednesday, the rise was just over 90,000 in just 24 hours with over 82,000 deaths reported so far. With its latest million cases recorded in just about 12 days, India is only the second country in the world to have more than 5 million cases after the United States. A heated discussion on COVID-19 was held in Parliament on the third day of monsoon session on Wednesday, during which leaders of opposition parties questioned the government's claims that the lockdown prevented up to 2.9 million virus cases. The health minister will respond to the questions on Thursday. I would like to point out that the day the lockdown was imposed, using the emergency provisions of the under the NDMA Act, Epidemic Act played a side role in this. That day, we had 600 cases in India. As we are discussing this subject, there are 50 lakh cases, 5 million cases in India, and almost 82,000 deaths. This is the true picture. India had implemented one of the world's strictest lockdowns in March when the outbreak began, but it has been steadily eased with schools set to open for some classes next Monday, along with tourist hotspot, the Taj Mahal. The health ministry has claimed the country's recovery rate is now very close to 78% and more than 1 million samples are being tested nationwide per day. India's Interior Ministry on Wednesday stated there had been no infiltration along the Indo-China border in the last six months. This came a day after Defence Minister Rajnath Singh in the parliament played down reported incursions by the Chinese troops in Ladakh as attempted transgressions. India's Interior Ministry on Wednesday said that no infiltration has been reported along the border with China in the last six months. The written response given by Nityanand Rai the junior interior minister to an unstarred caution in the upper house of the parliament on increased infiltration attempts along border with China and Pakistan said the government has adopted a multi-pronged approach to contain cross-border infiltration and has been taking proactive action against infiltrators. This came a day after India's defense minister Rajnath Singh told the parliament that Chinese army had made several attempts to transgress the line of actual control in Ladakh to change the status quo, but was thwarted by Indian troops. Meanwhile, India has stepped up logistics for soldiers in Ladakh along the de facto border with China in the western Himalayas, a move triggered by border standoffs with Chinese troops that began in May and escalated in June into hand-to-hand -hand combat in which 20 Indian soldiers were killed. And a well-oiled machinery exists here to handle both transients and loads. This joint capability between the Army and the Air Force 
is more than adequate to sustain the forces which have built up in recent time. In recent months, one of India's biggest military logistics exercises in years has brought vast quantities of ammunition, equipment, fuel, winter supplies and food into its union territory of Ladakh. India on Tuesday came down heavily on Pakistan, Turkey and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation at the UNHRC session in Geneva for wrecking up the Kashmir issue. In its right to reply, India said it does not need lecture on human rights from Pakistan, which consistently persecutes its ethnic and religious minorities. India on Tuesday came down heavily on Pakistan, Turkey and Organization of Islamic Corporation or IOC at the 46th session of the Human Rights Council for their remarks on India's internal affairs. Responding to reference made by IOC on Kashmir, the first secretary, Permanent Mission of India in Geneva, Pawan Badi, said IOC has allowed itself to be misused by Pakistan to subverse its own agenda. It's on the members of the IOC to decide if it's in their interest to allow Pakistan to do so. Further in India's right to reply, Badi took on Pakistan and said neither India nor others deserve this unsolicited lecture on human rights from a country that has consistently persecuted its ethnic and religious minorities and is an epicenter of terrorism. Thousands of six Hindus and Christian minority women and girls have been subjected to abductions, forced marriages and convergence in Pakistan. The plight of people under its subjugation is well represented by the state of affairs in Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Sindh. Activists have long blamed Pakistan for discriminating against its minorities, which is manifested in various forms against Pakistani Hindus, Christians, Sikhs and also Ahmadiyas and Shia Muslims. In news from Pakistan, higher education institutions and senior school classes across Pakistan reopened from Tuesday, ending a six-month-long closure due to the coronavirus pandemic. The reopening will be done in phases from this week, following a fall in new coronavirus cases numbers across the country. Millions of students in Pakistan returned to classes on Tuesday after a break of six months as schools and colleges began to reopen for the first time since the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. Educational institutes were closed in March as the coronavirus began to spread in Pakistan. But the government had last week announced a staggered resumption of classes after a fall in new coronavirus case numbers across the country. According to the schedule, schools for classes 6 till 8 will open on September 23 and on September 30, primary schools will reopen. COVID-19 की वजह से तालिम हर तो बहुत रहा है और हम गवर्नमेंट के इस डिसीजन को जो है अप्रिशिएट करेंगे कि इन्होंने आज से जो है स्कूल खोलने की इजाजत दी है सीनियर क्लासेस जो है वो बाकायदा मरहल वाल जो खोली गई है तो आज हमारा स्कूल ब्लॉकन हुआ है और इसमें सीनियर क्लासेस हमारे पास मौजूद है और हमें बहुत खुशी हुई कि 90 प्लस अटेंडेंस जो है वो हमारे सीनियर क्लासेस के आज मौजूद है इसका मतलब है कि बच्चे भी स्कूल आने के लिए बहुत ज्यादा बेचैन रहे हैं Pakistan's Education Minister Shafkat Mahmood warned of punitive action against educational institutions that do not follow precautionary measures. Students were thrilled to return to their respective schools after a long gap. मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इस हुकूमत का बहुत अच्छा एक दाम है काफी टाइम से छह महीने से हम अपने घर में थे और पढ़ाई का भी हमारा बहुत ज़्यादा लॉस हो रहा था अब जब हम स्कूल आए हैं तो हम हमारे बहुत हमें बहुत अच्छी तरीके से हर चीज़ समझ आ रही है हमारी स्कूल ने SOPs का भी बहुत अच्छी तरीके से ख्याल रखा हुआ है। Pakistan on Wednesday recorded 303,089 cases of COVID-19 and 6,393 deaths, but has seen a slowing in numbers since its peak in June, when it once recorded nearly 7,000 infections and 118 deaths in single day. Moving on. At the historic intra-Afghan talks being held in Doha, the Afghan government and the Taliban negotiators on Tuesday evening discussed the agenda and protocol prepared by their respective working groups. The two warring sides are yet to finalize the framework of the negotiations. The negotiating teams of the Afghan government and the Taliban held a meeting on Tuesday evening discussing the framework and the schedule of the negotiations according to statements from the both warring sides. 
a senior member of the Afghan government's delegation, Nader Naderi, in a series of tweets said it was decided to finalize the remaining part ASEP. Schedule and timings of the daily meetings are discussed too. Naderi asserted heads of delegations reiterated the need for patience and tolerance as the talks move forward in this path. Meanwhile, Taliban spokesman Mohammad Naeem also said the parties concerned must exercise patience and perseverance during the negotiations. The two sides are yet to finalize the framework of the negotiations. Tuesday's meeting was the second meeting between the Afghan government and the Taliban negotiating teams. Their first meeting was held hours after the opening ceremony of the negotiations on September 12, in which they formed to assign members of contact groups. The crucial intra-Afghan peace talks in Doha follow a U.S.-Taliban deal in February. The two sides are aiming for political reconciliation and an end to decades of violence in Afghanistan. In news from Nepal, the Nepali government has decided to allow domestic airlines to operate flights to all destinations and long-distance public ground transport services starting from Thursday. The resumption date was advanced from September 21 during the cabinet meeting. The Nepali government has decided to allow resumption of domestic flights and long-distance public ground transport services starting from Thursday after a hiatus of nearly six months. Pradeep Gyawali, the spokesperson for the government, announced that domestic flight operation would resume from September 17 instead from September 21st that was fixed earlier. The decision was taken during the cabinet meeting on Wednesday. Gyawali also announced that the expedition activities would commence from October 17. Nepali government had suspended these services in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic in the late March. This decision came ahead of major festivals in Nepal, Dashain and Tihar when people tend to travel faraway places. Meanwhile, as of Wednesday, the Nepali government reported 58,327 COVID cases and total deaths of over 371 from the pandemic as the Himalayan country moved to relax restrictions on economic activities. Moving on, onion prices have shot up in Bangladesh due to panic buying by consumers and price gouging by wholesalers. This followed after India on Monday put a ban on exports after its crop was damaged and harvesting delayed by excessive rain. India is the biggest supplier of onions to neighbouring Bangladesh. Onion prices in Bangladesh jumped by more than 50% this week following a ban on exports by largest supplier India after its crop was damaged and harvesting delayed by excessive rain. Retail prices of the root vegetable, a staple of subcontinental cuisine, jumped in capital Dhaka to 19 Taka to 100 Taka per kg on Tuesday, from 60 Taka on Monday and 30 Taka at the beginning of the month. India is the biggest supplier of onions to neighbouring Bangladesh, which buys a yearly average of more than 350,000 tonnes. In India, prices have tripled in a month as the summer sown onion crop in the southern states of Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh was damaged by excessive rainfall, traders said. India's key onion producing states have received as much as 41% more rainfall than normal since the monsoon season began on June 1. The rate is damaged. तो ये तभी प्याज में रेट बढ़ता नहीं तो प्याज में कभी रेट बढ़ नहीं बढ़ नहीं सकता जहाँ यहाँ 10 से 15 रुपए किलो तक रहना चाहिए अब साउथ साइड में इतनी ज़्यादा बरसात हुई है बिहार में साइड में भी बरसात हुई है तो हर जगह से माल की छोटे कम पड़ गए जहाँ से माल आता है जब वहाँ पे माल ही नहीं now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.